aussi trois S. Cavendish, notre mission universitaire euh, est spécifique en gérontologie sociale. La gérontologie sociale, euh, ça touche tous les aspects sociaux qui affectent le processus de vieillissement. Chez nous, on fait plusieurs projets et plusieurs euh, projets de recherche en lien avec le vieillissement et les impacts sociaux sur les personnes âgées. Mon nom est Cindy Starnino et je suis la directrice de la qualité, de la performance et de la mission universitaire au Citoise Cavendish. My name is Lucy Barrylack and I'm the coordinator of Practice to Point, Cutting Edge Services and Social Gerontology. Basically, because we're a university institute, we wanted to put aside uh, some funds to give uh, practitioners the ability to question their practice and to see, in fact, whether they feel that some services need to be developed. So this fund was put aside, and it's very much like a granting body where practitioners can actually apply for grants. We want practitioners to be comfortable and not feel that this is a research project. It could be as simple as asking for a lit review, it could be um, a group consultation, etc. My name is Mary Bianchini. I'm one of the nurses with the SAPA program, and I'm one of the clinicians who are present on that committee um, to give my feedback from a clinician perspective, but to also guide people. The Innovative Practice Committee offers a refreshing opportunity for people. Um, in our practices, we work very much in silos, and so it gives us an opportunity to look out the scope of what we are expected and to be able to identify needs in the community that need to be addressed, um, but we're not sure how to go about it, and I think this is a wonderful opportunity for people to take. The projects that are presently ongoing are extremely interesting and innovative in themselves. Uh, these projects range from issues around elder abuse, uh, palliative death, uh, death and dying. It has to do with things like nutrition, uh, male caregiving issues. So all these projects have been really interesting. My name is Karen Roll and I work at the Richardson Hospital. I'm a dietitian in the Ressources Technique department. The idea for this project came when I started working at the Richardson Hospital. I was asked to redo the dessert menu so that it would meet the guidelines put out by the cadre de référence in mise sur une saine alimentation. These guidelines recommend low sodium, low fat and low sugar for most of the dietary needs of uh, people in, in hospitals, so acute care, long-term care, rehab centers, and most healthcare facilities. The question I wanted to look at in the research is whether or not serving low sodium, low fat, and low sugar is beneficial to seniors. Perhaps it is when you're a little bit of a younger senior, but when you're in your last couple of years of your life in long-term care, this might not be optimal, especially for quality of life. My name is Bill Green, I'm a social worker and I work in SAPA, which is Soutien de Autonomie des Personnes Âgées for NDG. This project is on male caregiving, so uh, it's a subject many of us are familiar with. We serve mainly women, but we have reason to believe that the number of men who are caregivers will augment in the coming years. So we're looking at our practice with men as caregivers, how we can serve them best. We realize that in terms of caregiving, in terms of the support that we've put in place, much of it is modeled around women and women's needs and what women respond to. So this is a way of trying to look at what we do, try to think critically about our practice, try to look at what works and what doesn't work. And we realize certain aspects of the care that we offer don't work as well as others. My name is Wendy Foster and I'm a recreation technician at St. Margaret's Long-Term Care Centre. Well, the main objective of the project was to demonstrate that the individuals who were residing on the locked unit of the Henri Bradet Residential Centre, that they were capable of participating in activities with the regular population of the centre. Um, up until this point, they had very limited opportunities and they were pretty much secluded on this uh, locked unit of the centre. My name is Irene Adolka. My name is Patrick Durivage and I am the social worker and admissions coordinator at St. Margaret's Residence. Je suis travailleur social au CLSC René Cassin et je suis aussi coordinateur de la pratique de pointe en soins palliatifs communautaires. Il y a principalement trois grandes phases au projet. La première phase, c'est vraiment de voir les besoins des intervenants dans le milieu de pratique. La deuxième phase, voir en termes de rédaction d'un programme pour offrir des soins palliatifs en centre d'hébergement. La troisième phase, c'est de voir les besoins de formation continue pour les intervenants.
One of the main objectives of phase one was not only to look at the quality of life of our dying residents and what that means, but also the quality of work life of our staff, which is equally important. And we know that one you know, goes hand in hand with the other. The Innovative Practice Committee offers um, support on many levels, the three of the main ones obviously being logistics, human resources and financial. Um, the logistical is the biggest piece that I think I'm involved with and that is helping people identify what they view um, an unmet, unmet need is within their practice and helping them bring it forward to someone who can help formulate the question so that it is something that can be presented as a research. In terms of this project, I was uh, offered two days a week to uh, implement it over at the Henri Burdett Residential Centre, whereby I was liberated from my job at St. Margaret's. Le comité de la pratique innovante nous a vraiment aidé à formuler le projet, à le détailler en termes d'objectifs, en termes d'étapes qu'on devait suivre. Ils nous ont aussi beaucoup aidé à mettre des, un réseau de contacts en place. The support of members of that team will will really accommodate most needs that you have so that you can take part, whether it be um, a little bit of reduced time on your caseload, whether it be support uh, around the process for many of us who hadn't done research projects before. So once a week I take the day away from the rehab hospital and I spend the day at the library combing through all the databases and coming up with ideas and writing them down and documenting everything. Uh, the funding is primarily uh, for my time. Uh, the impact that I would like for my project to have is to put Cetois S. Cavendish on the cutting edge of malnutrition and senior care. I would really like us to be the one Cetois S. that has the lowest incidence of malnutrition. We hope in the end to have a kind of formation, a kind of training available to workers. It's really about sensitizing our workers to, to the tasks involved with caregiving, how we do our work, how we structure our work, and how to best serve men. What I hope is for the impact is that the residents will eventually be either integrated into the regular stream uh, of activities, uh, even consider having them dispersed throughout the facility that we would not need a locked unit. Or should we continue to have such a locked unit that we reflect on our practices and that we, we possibly add uh, human resources in order to support that? There's a list of uh, guidelines that came up including um, a, a toolkit for professionals. Uh, you know, let's find out. We're, we're all interested in best practices. So what are the best tools for, for pain management, for measuring pain, for um, you know, measuring grief, um, you know, for making sure that someone's holistic needs are being met. I think the great force of the project was that everyone was involved, from the beginning to the end, with the director and the concierge who cleaned the rooms. Everyone was in the middle of the project. That's a great work that Grignan has done to see the needs of all the participants, all the participants in the ensemble of the hébergement, because it's really the team complete. Soin. Donc on parle de la réceptionniste, le concierge, le cuisinier, tout le monde est au courant euh, du projet et a participé directement. We're, we're doing a better job now of identifying residents who are palliative um, and identifying it to the team and having open discussions with residents and families. Basically, the funds can be applied by any practitioner, regard multidisciplinary, across all our sites. Practitioners can, it can be in different disciplines. It can be uh, social workers, occupational therapists, physiotherapists, nutritionists, nurses, animators, recreologists, etc. It's a very simple form that we have developed, a granting form where they can apply. It's very, very short. Um, as a matter of fact, they could directly call me, first and foremost, even before they even apply for the grant to ask uh, whether this is something that would be considered. I could certainly help them or direct them to the right person that would help them even fill out the form. I would definitely recommend to other practitioners to apply for funds. 
it gives us the uh, incentive to try something different within our field of practice, regardless of whatever that field of practice is. Um, you know, and it also gives us the, the opportunity to try something cutting edge that might impact not only our own site, but our entire uh, organization, and hopefully even others along the way. I would really like to encourage practitioners to apply for these grants, because I know you are the ones that have the knowledge about what's actually happening in frontline services. And this gives us a great opportunity for you to be able to explore and develop new services. At the end of the day, all that we are looking for is to really benefit our clients and our population.